Okay. Welcome, welcome to Chicago, guys. Thanks. It's my hometown. Your hometown. It's true. Has it changed much since you lived here? It's bigger. Yeah. Bigger. More buildings. More people. Nice. I'll say too that when you lived here, you were smaller. <laughs> Metaphorically and physically. But not emotionally? I don't know. I didn't know the man. <laughs> Let's get small, guys. <laughs> well, guys, I mean, I know you have lots of questions for these three excellent people. So, you know what? I think we should start off with Captain America himself. Uh, Cap, you have a question. I do. I do. Guys, I love all three of you. Your work is fantastic, but I love these two even more. I think their question is more important than mine. Oh, okay. Um, there, there was a question that I had for the whole panel, um, but there was a different question that I had for somebody uh, who has made the last six years of my life the most enjoyable and that I wouldn't be able to be without. Oh, good lord. Um, so, Aaron, if you'd be able to, to read the honor. <laughs> Green Lantern? <laughs> <laughs> Did I take 
Exaggerates it and he makes it worse for his character, Rainierly. And then he it just just to show that Rainierly does not appreciate the position he's in. And uh, and Alan's very good at that. He's very very good at that. He'll take like uh, uh, well, well, uh, he went to a convention and he was he uh, came to a hotel. He said, "I don't think I'm at the right hotel." And he was kind of looked around. On, on one side there was this lineup of people and everybody had babies, but they were dolls. And they're all checking in. He said, this is not the... And he looked over here, and there were people dressed as Klingons and, and Firefly, you know, and they're checking in. And he goes, no, no, this is the right hotel. <laughs> but these people are looking at these people like, those guys are weird. And these people are looking at like, those guys are weird. <laughs> and they did an entire... He did an episode about it. That's real. <laughs> That up. He did not make that's not that's, that is the truth. <laughs> what 
what convention was this? The baby convention. I think that's what they called it. Baby convention. <laughs> baby con. <laughs> and Vincon 2015. Hi there. Hi. Uh, Ken? I'm he. Yep. Uh, so, in what episode... I think he's talking to you. <laughs> that was yeah. the commander. <laughs> what? Ooh. <laughs> was that scripted, or was that an ad lib, or does Joss kind of give you opportunities to actually ad lib anything? That was scripted. Let me tell you, Joss Whedon tells stories. Back me up, guys. He tells stories on a lot of levels. The lighting, the music, the co he is telling that story. Nothing happens in a Joss Whedon show by accident. Those words were the Bible. <laughs> the only time I ever improvised a line was in Serenity when I said faster, faster, faster would be better. That's the only line I've ever improvised for just me. <laughs> it's true, yeah. It would, it would let you come up with doings, uh, actions, prop work, but the words were law. I always thought this is kind of tough because it's, it is English, but it's very poetic and it's really weird. This, we called it jaw speak. I said, this is really challenging. And then Summer would come in and start talking to crazy talk. <laughs> I don't know how she does that, so maybe I'm going to stop complaining. It's all disjointed and all over the place. A couple times it rhymed. <laughs> that had to be easier. Summer, did you ever attempt to uh, uh, slip in an uh, improv line or anything? No, I mean, it was my first job, so I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I just read what they put on the page. There's a beautiful innocence and purity to that. I wish I, I wish I could get back to that. These lines don't work. Yeah, I'm that guy. I, I saw, wait, there was a there was a documentary that James Conn was in it recently. I was I was I had not the door, but he was there, and I said, listen to his, his uh, interview, and he said this one line and said. If I'm having trouble saying it, it's not written right. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I grew up seeing all of you on different shows. Um, special, spe special shout out to Adam Baldwin because um, my mom and sister are huge fans of last shit. I have a question for all of you. Uh, what is the hardest and or weirdest thing you've had to do in your acting career. Summer, go. <laughs> um, uh, that would be my, my first big scene, jumping out of the box with the clothes on and doing it full out at the rehearsal and I think freaking everybody out. Um, that was probably, that was, I, I, I was really nervous about that moment and it still, it feels, when I, when I think about it, it feels real um, all over again. That was, that was scary. Adam? hardest thing physically I guess would have been some of the things I love the most were, were the first few days of filming in Serenity when we were out on the old Templin Highway and we were hanging from wires and climbing in and out of that really sharp edged mule flying thing. Um, that, that was physically really hard but fun. I, I love those days. You? <laughs> I would say, like my first few days on Firefly, no one would ever give me a chance to be a lead actor on a show, and it was my very first time doing it. But it was the first for a lot. I think nothing. You're pretty, you're pretty seasoned. But <laughs> there's, a, there's a vulnerability there. You like acting. You're constantly putting yourself out there for other people's judgment. You're constantly putting yourself out there. You are always. You're like an open sore, but you. <laughs> Maybe not quite so vulnerable. <laughs> Jumping out of a box naked in front of a bunch of strangers. <laughs> Which you did great. You did a great job. Right? Um, but yeah, it's always, it's always you, I don't know, man. I still get nervous. Do you guys get nervous? Yeah. About new shows and new jobs? And... Not anymore, no. <laughs> I used to. But my wife gave me really great advice. You lead with love. And you can, from that platform of love, you will be embraced, as long as you've done the prep work. But, I mean, it's it's awkward when you're, especially when you're a guest walking on a show. I did an arc on SVU, four, four episodes, and I was coming in just to, as a placeholder. 
and that's a grizzled, seasoned crew and cast. So I, I retract what I said. Yes, I was. I was a little nervous on the first couple of days. That's true. But it's hard when you it's when you trust the people around you. It becomes easier. You can do things because you, you feel safe in your safe environment. But yeah, the first few days, I don't know if it's been able. So it's important when uh, you're a regular on a show that you're embracing for the cat for the for the guests to make it as fun for them because they'll they're going to be regulars on a show that you're going to be guesting on at some point in the future. You want them to return the favor. I always watched you do that, Nathan. You would always when people would come in, you would always ask them their name and make them feel like part of the team. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Uh, big fan. All three of you. You got me through my first quarter or year at university, so thank you for that. You're welcome. But uh, I had a question for Nathan. I know you were a big fan of like the Nathan Drake video game series, also on um, Game of Thrones. If you had the chance to choose between being a big motion blockbuster like that or surviving for five episodes on Game of Thrones, which would you do? <laughs> Um, the problem with participating on a show you're a huge fan of, I did Lost, for one episode. Spoiler alerts. <laughs> he dies? <laughs> back that stuff. So I, would, I would leave Game of Thrones entirely alone so you don't pull back that curtain and see the inner guts of it because it takes away the reality. I want to I want to suspend that disbelief. I want to I want to be able to enjoy that show continually. And uh, I think Nathan Drake would be my closest shot at like an Indiana Jones song. If given a chance, I mean, my druthers. I talked to Nolan North a lot at Comic Con, who does the voice for Nathan Drake. I said, hey, let's solve this right now. I'll play Nathan Drake, but you loop all my lines in. He's a good voice, I think. He does yeah. the voice for Nathan Drake in the oh. video games. Okay. Yeah. But the guy looks suspiciously like me. And his name is Nathan. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, thank you so much for being here. I kind of can't believe I'm in your presence. But, um, <laughs> um, you look so great. Who are you dressed as? Oh. <laughs> Kaylee. a wonderful job just as actors portraying your characters on Firefly, and I was wondering if, in part, that was due to the fact that you really connected on an emotional level with them, and what part of yourself you saw in your characters. Go, Adam, you go first. <laughs> I think, I like food. <laughs> it's true, it's true, yeah. So, I, I would try to figure out a time where Jane could be eating a lot, or, or manipulating things, or you know, since maybe a little OCD. Um, He's always touching something. Yeah, I'm always touching something. <laughs> Say it with me. I'll be my father. Firefly, I've pulled 25. 
so there was something very special going on there, to say the least. Uh, I'm fond of saying, when I go to do a TV show, all the hard work is done by the time I get there. The sets are built, the costumes are there, the, everything's written, the guys are doing it, everything's done. And you just come in and you just flap your yapper. <laughs> but never has it been more true that uh, I felt like the whole cast did so much work for me. I couldn't fail surrounded by these people. It was easy, it made it really easy. It really easy. Because of the importance of these roles, was it difficult shedding these characters on the very next job that you guys went on? I didn't work for years. <laughs> Started, you were just phoning it. <laughs> no, the next job I got was on uh, Angel. Uh, I, called, I called Joss and I said, Joss, I hear you're trying to get this movie made. In the meantime, I need work, so <laughs> I wouldn't mind. What do you got? He was kind enough to find me. Like, well, there's this really mean guy you could play. <laughs> Angel. Yeah, let's do that. After the show got canceled, and I was sitting by your fire with Jewel, just crying and thinking, I don't know how, I don't know, I, I guess I, 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 I guess my career's over again soon. Um, but I do remember it was different, and, and it was you that told me, you know, we won't always be like this kid. You know, this is it was my first family, so I didn't know what else to expect, but. Um, it isn't quite the same. Of course, you do meet people that you connect with, but but Firefly was was my first family and, and still is. Yeah. yeah, that's true. It was one of those really rare experiences where everyone loved each other. Everyone, and uh, those are those are the ones you really need to recognize while they're happening. And appreciate them because they do go away. Every show either is canceled or wraps eventually. So enjoy it while it's happening. Yeah. Anything? Anything bad? I just agree. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Um, I'm an acting student at college right now, and I was wondering if you had any advice for aspiring actors. <coughs> do it if it scares you. If you're too scared to do it, that's a really good reason to do it. Have a plan B. <laughs> no, if, you're, if you love it and, and, you, and you're passionate about it and you're going to do it, you're going to do it, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make money doing it. So it really has to be from, from love first and then... Uh, Keep yourself fit and drink good water and stretch and read good books and watch the greats do it. Watch the best of the best. Watch the Meryl Streep's of the world and the De Niro's of the world and watch the great directors and learn from that. Read the best plays and all that stuff. So be smart. And trust yourself. Trust yourself and trust your own voice. And if there's the, the thing that I fell in love with about acting the most is that is that each person has this uh, this uh, this magic that only they can bring to a story. Um, each one of us would interpret a role just a little bit different than someone else, and um, that's I think what's so empowering about being an actor is just trusting yourself and and um, and feeling safe enough to show everyone else. Yeah. Can watch Firefly. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Sarah, and it's awesome to meet you guys. Uh, I have a request and a question, if that's okay. Um, my sister and I share a birthday next week, and she's actually at work all weekend. If you could just say hi to her. Laura? Happy birthday, Laura! <laughs> Do you guys have a favorite comic book character or like a favorite?
animated cartoon that maybe you watched when you were growing up? I'm loving Rick and Morty right now. Anybody watch that? Yeah. That's some twisted stuff. That's some dark and weird stuff. I love it. I like Peter Griffin. <laughs> One of the greatest television characters ever. I like our comic book. I don't. I don't get tired of seeing myself on a on a on a comic. That is. <laughs> Nathan, I want to see if this still works. Game? Of Thrones. Awesome. <laughs> and then for everybody, would you tell us what your guilty pleasures are? <laughs> uh, Backstreet Boys in One Direction. <laughs> what? Yeah, she came and did a guest role on Chuck. Yeah. 
past that. <laughs> She's like a great guy, John Corbett. Never heard of her. <laughs> Hello there. Hey, um, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of all you guys, and especially my mom. She wants me to say hi to Nathan because we both watch Castle together all the time. Because you guys are excellent teams. I I kind of feel bad because I'm a huge Halo fan. And it's not really a Firefly-related question, but this is for both of you boys. What was your favorite moment doing work for Halo? And congrats for Halo 5 coming out. Thanks, right? <laughs> okay, so one of the Halos we did uh, voice work for, uh, Adam and I did voice work for this video game called Halo. Um, <laughs> in one of the permutations of the game, you can play in these giant arenas with the voice of whatever character you'd like to select. So if you select Buck, you'd hear my voice. And I'd be playing with my buddies, you know, over the headset on Xbox Live. And you'd hear my voice say, They're coming in from the south! And I'd say, Colton! <laughs> so I'd start calling out my friends' names to personalize <laughs> the game that much more. <laughs> And when Alan's voice would come up, I would say, So, Alan, was that you or was that you? <laughs> I don't remember. I just didn't play the game. I'm not, I'm not a gamer. I'm sorry. What do you call a guy who's a nerd for not being a nerd? <laughs> That's called being a person. <laughs> oh. But he's not pretending he's being a nerd. I'm a run I'm a Project Runway nerd. <laughs> um, we only have time for I think two quick questions, so I'm gonna do the first one here. Hello, I'm Courtney. Um, my family has actually been brought together through Firefly Serenity and Doctor Horrible. But <laughs> I was wondering, your characters in Firefly and Serenity, they show such fear for Reavers, and it seems so legitimate. How do you mentally put yourself into that fear? I imagine my wife yelling at me. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I always love that, because you look at the biggest toughest guy you can find, and find out where he draws the line. Reavers, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, let's go do this, let's shoot him. Why didn't we shoot him? We should have shot him, we should have fought, we should have this. Are you gonna run away? And then, Reavers, I'm out. <laughs> I don't like that. It's like, whatever the toughest guy's afraid of, I'm afraid of that. How'd you get into the, the headspace of hearing Reavers? I just didn't want to disappoint Joss. <laughs> <laughs> One of the hardest things I've ever done was had lunch with Reavers. <laughs> I was looking at their faces going, <laughs> trying to have the marinara sauce. Hi there. Hi. I'm a big castle fan and um, I've been reading spoilers, I won't say anything, but <laughs> the season sounds kind of darker than normal. Is that true? Can you say anything about this upcoming season, Nathan? I'll tell you this, there, uh, there always has to be some kind of drama, there has to be a hurdle, there has to be something. Our show does do serious, scary stuff sometimes. We've got serious killers and whatnot, it's, it can be absolute stuff. Um, but at the heart of it, I think one of the things that makes Castle successful is that it's lighthearted and it doesn't take itself too seriously. And that is something that the two guys who are running the show right now, one of them who was one of our writers for four years, another one who has been with us since the, the beginning, these guys love the show. But they truly feel that at its heart, Castle is a comedy. What you all like? <laughs> so, Adam, you should really come to another episode. <laughs> Don't punch him this time. <laughs> while I'm at it, deal. I'd also like to invite Summer. Would you guys like to see these two on Castle? Well, on that 
Orlando. Castle comes back for season eight, September 21st. Last ship is still airing season two, Sundays on TNT. And Carlin is on its way. Chicago Comic Con, show it love.